Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Living Beyond Limits. I am Reverend Jennifer Spear, and we are a part of Centers for Spiritual Living, and I welcome each and every one of you, and I'm so glad that you came to spend your morning with us and together, and if you are new to us today, from the very bottom of our hearts to yours, we're so glad that you've joined us today. Welcome. And so let's start this service by reading our mission statement that's on the front of the bulletin. We are a sanctuary where people can discover and reveal the presence of God within their own being and experience their oneness with all life. Through the realization of this inner presence of love and peace, we give way to the evolutionary impulse of the divine and become a beneficial presence in the world. So that's actually what we are doing here at Living Beyond Limits is we are giving ourselves the opportunity to get back in touch with our own divine essence, to recognize that the presence of the infinite one lives within us. Not only does it live within us, but it is our own divine essence. It is what we come from and it is actually what we come as, an individualized expression of that infinite one. And what that means then, if we are an incarnation of that one, then all of those aspects and attributes of the divine are also true about us. That means that love already lives with inside, inside of us. That peace is already innate to our own beingness that we have an authentic power, that we are made of wholeness so we are whole, regardless of what has happened in our lives or what is happening. And so what, me what that means then is when life, say, isn't reflecting back to us, say, peace or love or kindness, that we can tap into that within us, that we can bring peace or love into a situation that is actually calling for it. And when we do that, we are actually acting as a beneficial presence in this world. We are participating in our own spiritual evolution. And because we are part of the whole and everything is connected to everything else, as we grow and evolve and unfold, we affect everyone and everything. And so I thank every single one of you for answering the call of your own spirit to be walking this path to be living this spiritual light, to be bringing the love and the light and the goodness of spirit through you into this world. I thank each one of you. And so as we begin our service today, our practitioner Barbara Conant is going to lead us in an evocation as we begin to evoke an awareness of the presence of spirit that is always right where we are. And then she will do a contemplative reading for us. And Margaret Owens is here with us today. She's going to lead us in the prayer chant, I open up, that will lead us into that evocation. And so I invite you to sing along if you'd like, or to just allow yourself to turn within and to allow those words to take you to that place within you that is just the beingness of your own self.
my thoughts within and open my heart to the divine essence of life. I know we are all points of light and love within the mind of God. The light brings greater understanding and awareness of how life is manifesting through us. Love is the movement of good through our activities, making our life more fulfilling. Spirit is ever-present and is here right now, thinking our thoughts and reminding us we are light. And as we shine our light through our mind, heart, and activities, we do this with joy and goodwill. We also realize we are open conduits of peace and love which we share with one another. I bless every person here today and know as we gather, we celebrate spirit which lives in us and expresses as each one of us. I bless this service. I bless Reverend Jennifer. I bless Margaret. And I give thanks for this day. And know we are all held in the loving mind of God. And so it is. Good morning, everyone. My reading today is from Unlimited Visibility by Stephanie Sorensen. We can become a master of our fate by shifting our thinking from dependency on the outer world to trust in the inner world. And by keeping our true spiritual identity in our mind, no matter what is happening in the outer world. As we turn within ourselves, we find the power of spirit waiting to bring about all that we seek in the outer world. We create our good from inside out as a creative medium of spirit is activated by our thinking and beliefs. <clears throat> Through changing our thinking and experiencing our changed thought, we no longer doubt that we really are connected to an invisible, creative power that denies us nothing that we are willing to accept. We become empowered by the knowledge of the creativity of our thoughts and that there is a power that responds to our thinking. Our inner resources are unlimited and we experience more spiritual depth and inspiration by turning within to spirit and by allowing God to use us. This source inspires, guides, and directs us so that our use of the creative medium of spirit brings greater good into our lives. And so it is. I know. I was like that. 
the appetizer. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Good morning. me a favor and go close that door. Thank you. And so when people ask me what minister I'm a church of, I think they very often think that I'm the minister of a traditional church. But, you know, living beyond limits isn't really a church in the traditional sense of what a church is. And so, I don't know, a couple of months ago, Gamal, if you don't know who Gamal is, he's the guy with the beard in the back there, 
The first day that he came to check out Living Beyond Limits to see what it was about, he's been to lots of centers for spiritual living, but he was looking for a place to bring his mom. And he said he thought that she could come here because he was sure there'd be a bunch of nice people here, which is such a nice thing to say. But he said that he's actually realized that his mom's not very religious. And my response to him was, well, neither are we. (laughs) Because really, we are a center for spiritual living. We are really a center where we discover ways to live a spiritual life. Where we learn how to have a spiritual perspective around the things that are happening in our lives and the things that are happening in the world. It is a place where we open minds and hearts so that we live a better life. And it is a place where we get to discover who we are and our relationship with that infinite presence and our relationship with the whole of things. And so really, we are a center for spiritual living. That's really what we're about here. And that is also one of the things that I love most about Living Beyond Limits and about this community is that we are all about spiritual living and that all of us really in this room are dedicated to living a spiritual life. Even when it's challenging, even when it's not easy, we're willing to apply that perspective and to do what needs to be done and to look within, really. And so Reverend Scott Aubrey said, behind our visible life, There is a God force, a divine impulse that yearns to express more, to do more, and to be more. It wants to pour the qualities of itself into our livingness. That's what we're discovering here. And yet, sometimes when we have challenges in our lives, when there's challenges in the world, we kind of forget that. We forget that there is an infinite presence that is seeking expression through us. And when we forget that, what happens often is we feel stuck. We feel stuck in our problems. We get stuck in the issues that are going on in the world, whether it's like losing a job or having a challenge with a neighbor or if it's having difficulty with your kids or with your parents whether it's experiencing some sort of dis-ease or having money problems, or even if it's just getting stuck in the political climate and what's going on in this country. And when we feel stuck like that, and when we forget that that infinite presence is seeking to express through us, we can feel like a victim. We can feel like a victim to the circumstances in our own lives and to the circumstances that are happening in the world. But when we are in those challenges, sometimes we forget that the infinite is with us. That's the problem, is we forget. We forget that the nature of life is expansion and unfolding and evolving and ever becoming more. We forget that life is for us, that God is for us. And if life is for us, who can be against us? What can be against us? We forget that there's that infinite presence that is seeking to pour itself into us and through us. As creative solutions, as ideas, as the solution and the answer to the problem, that it wants to. It's seeking to pour itself into us and through our lives. We forget sometimes that that creative intelligence is really the essence of who we are and what we are, and that it is the essence of our lives and fills our lives. And so as human beings, we want to be successful. We want to be successful in all of our undertakings, whether it's undertaking a new job or just a new project. We want to be successful in our relationships, all of them even the one where you're having the difficult relationship with your next door neighbor. We want to be successful in all of our relationships. We want to be successful whenever we're learning something new. And we want to be able to resolve the challenges that come up in our lives. We want to be able to resolve those challenges, whether it's a work challenge or a relationship challenge or a money challenge 
or a health challenge. We want to be able to resolve those things. We don't want to feel like a victim, and we don't want to feel helpless. In the Science of Mind textbook, Ernest Holmes, the founder of this philosophy, said, it is right that we should be successful, for otherwise spirit is not expressed. The divine cannot lack for anything, and we should not lack for anything that makes life worthwhile here on earth. It's right to be successful. That's how spirit is more fully expressed. And then, so what if, what if every one of the challenges that comes up in your life is really a prayer request from your own divine self, a prayer request from your own individual life to remember, to remember the truth about your relationship with the divine, to remember the truth about who you are. What if all of those challenges that come up in your life are really asking you to shift your perspective? To open your mind and your heart to something greater, something greater than you have been, something greater than you have experienced, something greater than you have expressed? What if it is asking you and inviting you to allow that something, capital S something, that is greater, which is spirit in you and through you, to express in this world in a greater way? What if it's an invitation to enable your own untapped potential to come through? What if it's a prayer request from your own divine nature to remember who you are? an individuation of the infinite, an outpicturing of divine potential, an expression of wisdom and intelligence and the good that God is. And so the title of my talk today is, What is Your Prayer Request? And I'm talking about that every challenge is a prayer request from life. Every challenge is a prayer request from our own spiritual nature. It's a call to discover who we are and what we are. It's a call to discover and to experience and to express our own greater yet to be. And so if you think about it, can you think of a challenge that has ever come up in your life that did not cause you to grow? that did not cause you to be more, to enable to get through it, in order to come to the other side of it. I can think of something just as simple as our washing machine quit filling up with hot water. You'd put it on hot and nothing would happen. So we went and bought new hoses and checked the faucets and water's coming out of the faucet at the top of the washing machine and put new hoses on and it wasn't clogged and there's still no hot water coming in. So we went shopping for a new washing machine, and you know, they're like $900 or something like that. And it's not that we don't have the money, we could certainly buy a new one, really it's about deciding which one you want is the challenge. And then we thought, you know what, what if there's something in this that can just be fixed? So we went on to the University of YouTube <laughs> and discovered there was a $12 part. There's a plumber, you know, they give you lessons on there talking about it showing you how to replace it, showing you what it does. So we ordered this $12 part with some sort of a hot water valve inside of it and changed it. And lo and behold, the washing machine works perfectly fine. <laughs> so there is a greater confidence in us than there was before. There is a greater understanding that there are answers out there irregardless of what your problem is irregardless of what you're up against. So we got to discover something new. We got to discover our own greater yet to be and the more that had not been tapped into before. I think about even in the challenges of COVID and all of the restrictions and all of the closing down and the back and forth and back and forth, I have become so much more flexible than I have ever been in my entire life. And with that flexibility comes freedom. 
With that flexibility comes not getting stressed out when things aren't going the way that you think they're supposed to go. So with that, there's a freedom and there's a sense of peace and there's a sense of ease. That is the divine, that peace and ease seeking to express. It's always been there. I was just so attached to things before that I couldn't feel it. I couldn't allow it in. So it's about us being open enough to allow it in. And so everything then really is an invitation from spirit to remember who we are to remember the truth of that infinite one that we live and move and have our beingness within, to remember our relationship to it. And what that means then is that there's never really a solid or fixed problem. There is only infinite potential that we live in. There's only infinite potential that is seeking expression all of the time. And so if you're feeling stuck somewhere in your life, if you have a challenge going on in your life and you haven't been able to find the answer or you think there is no answer or there is no solution, think about this. The Milky Way which is the galaxy that we are a part of, the Milky Way contains 300 billion stars in a vast structure roughly 100,000 light years in diameter. Do you know how big 100,000 light years in diameter is? One of the truly exciting discoveries of the past two decades is that our sun is far from unique in having orbiting planets. Evidence show that the majority of sun-like stars in the Milky Way have planets orbiting them. Many with a size and distance from their parent star, allowing them to host life as we know it. Spiral nebulae are more galaxies, the nearest being 2 million light years away. There are galaxies that we don't know about because there hasn't been enough time for their light to travel to us since the Big Bang. If you think there is no solution to that little tiny problem in your life, think about the immensity of just this galaxy and the creative intelligence that that has sprung forth out of. That is the intelligence you live in. That is the intelligence that you have been created out of. That is the intelligence that is the nature of the life that you're living. That lives inside of you. There's a quote from Reverend Sidney Lehman Steen that says, As we contemplate the infinite nature of the one, that contemplation aligns us with the nature of the one. It lifts us out of conditioned beliefs in lack, limitation, and struggle, and into the truth of flow and ease and grace and plenty. This is not arguing or fighting with ourselves or the world. This is simply turning our attention in contemplation of the highest truth we can know. This contemplation itself is creative. When you think you're stuck, think about the immensity of spirit. Think about the immensity of that creative intelligence that fills the cosmos. When you think you're stuck, remembering the truth about spirit, about the infinite, about that absolute intelligence opens an avenue within us for those ideas to come through. Creates an avenue within us for those solutions to come through. It gets us unstuck from our limiting beliefs. It enables us to make a greater way for our own greater yet to be to unfold. And so when you're stuck in a challenge that you haven't yet been able to solve, 
It doesn't serve you to give yourself a hard time. It doesn't serve yourself to ask, what's wrong with me? Or even if it's about them, what's wrong with them? It doesn't serve us to ask ourselves, what am I doing wrong? Or what are they doing wrong? It really serves ourselves instead, and it is our task to get quiet and to go within and to remember that we live in that infinite universe. To remember that boundlessness is our own spiritual nature. To ask ourselves, what is this situation calling for as we sit in that quiet and listen? To ask ourselves, what is it that is wanting to come forward through this situation? What is it that is seeking to express? And so do you have any challenges in your life right now? Do you have any places where you kind of feel stuck a little bit? You don't know the answer, you don't know the solution? There's a little piece of paper in your handout that's yellow, gold, not the green one. The green one's on the chair. In your bulletin, there's a yellow one. Jan, Marty needs one too if you're going back there to get one. Do we have more bulletins, Rosie? And if you need a pen, raise your hand. Here, Margaret, you can have this one. Uh -huh. So I invite you just to go ahead and close your eyes for a minute and to bring that situation to mind where you're feeling stuck where you're feeling like maybe there's no solution or there's no answer, where it feels like a problem, and allowing yourself just to sink in, to recognize that we are living in this creative field that we call spirit, this creative field where there are no problems. There are, is only the all-knowing mind of the infinite, that permeates all things, that all-knowing mind is the wisdom of our own spirit, the wisdom of our own soul. That wisdom lives right here within us, in our hearts, at the very center of who we are. And so I invite you just to sink into that place within you, opening yourself, knowing that this is where the answers reside. And to ask yourself, that knowingness within you, what is this situation calling for? What is this particular situation calling for? And when you have that answer, to go ahead and write it down. And when you're complete with that question, to go ahead and close your eyes. And so sinking back in again to the knower within, to that place where there is no separation or distinction. There is only consciousness itself. That thing that Ernest Holmes calls mind, the one that lives in us. And to ask that place within us, what is it that is seeking to come forward by means of me? What is it that is seeking or yearning or wanting to come forward 
through me, by means of me. What am I to know? What am I to understand? What am I to be? What is it that's seeking to come forward by means of this situation? And to write that down. And I'll give you just a couple of seconds to wrap that last idea up. That is how you do spiritual living. That is how you apply a spiritual perspective to your life and to the things that are happening, happening in your life. Rather than being a victim, rather than complaining, we look from a spiritual perspective. What is this inviting forward in me? How is this for me? What is this about? If I am an eternal being on this spiritual path, how is this serving me? What does my spirit want me to know? What does my soul want me to understand? That's how we live a spiritual life. One of the ways that we live a spiritual life. And so I'd like to close with another quote from Ernest Holmes. He said, we are surrounded by an infinite possibility. It is goodness, it is life. It wishes to express through us. And so my invitation is just to remember that. We live in infinite possibility. And that wishes to express through us. Wishes to express in our lives and as our lives. So remember that you are never limited that every seeming challenge in your life is really a prayer request, a prayer request from your own life and from your own spirit, spiritual self, from your own soul to discover and to experience and to express your own greater yet to be. To express and experience and bring forward your own spiritual magnificence and the truth of who you are. So identify with that. Be that as you move out into the world. And as a result, you'll be living from your spiritual nature all of the time. Walking this path that your soul said yes to when you decided to come to this planet. And so blessings to every single one of you on this path of remembering, on this path of self-discovery, and on this path of bringing your own magnificence to your life. Blessings to you. <clears throat> <clears throat>And so right now, we just allow ourselves to remember and to marinate in that truth that spirit is everywhere present. That that infinite one surrounds us and envelops us, lives within us, lives in and through everything in this universe. And that it is never bound by precedent it is never limited in any single way. It is the absolute, infinite, boundless potential and good. It is creativity itself. It is love and wholeness and light and truth and boundless good. And it is this field that we live in. This field that has always been since before time began. And this field that we walk and move and live in at all times. And so today I just recognize that every challenge that appears in our lives is really the knocking of spirit on our hearts. To remember who we are. To give way to that grandness 
and that beauty and that magnificence of spirit. For because we are incarnations of that one, we are never limited. And in spirit, there are no limitations, there are no delays, there are no hindrances. There is just the allness of the absolute, the allness of good, the allness of that infinite one. And so today, I know that as we move from this service out into our world, that everywhere we go in everything we do, we walk with spirit. That spirit leads us and guides us and unfolds through us as the solutions and the ideas and the creativity required to solve the things that are happening in life. And so today, we rest in great anticipation of having our own answers and our own solutions with ease and in time and on time. We live in anticipation of an ever unfolding beauty and an ever unfolding goodness. And so that becomes our experience. And so I speak this word also, not just for us in this room, but for every single person on this planet knowing that the infinite presence of that one is right where each and every single person is, and that every need right now simply becomes an opening for the solution, for the answer, for that absolute presence is bigger and grander and more powerful than anything in the world for everything else that does not look like the divine is present is simply an incomplete experience, an incomplete perception. And right now, God is unfolding there. And there, and there, and there, everywhere. And so solutions are making themselves known and answers are being revealed. And healing is happening all over this planet, healing in households and in hearts, healing in bodies and between nations, healing of every sort. And so it is with a grateful heart that I release this prayer into the creative law of the universe, knowing that it returns to us in full fledged magnificence. And so I release this prayer in gratitude and I say, and so it is.
That's actually my favorite song Margaret sings. I requested both those songs today. (laughs) It's now time for our affirmation. So if you would join me, I remember remember that that every every seeming challenge is a prayer from my own inner self to discover, experience, and express my own greater yet to be. I answer the call, and I bring my untapped greatness forward. So it is. I have a few invitations for you. One is we are going to start class on the 18th of October. It is a class called Change Your Thinking, Change Your Life. And anybody is um, eligible for this class. You don't have to have found, had foundations. In fact, you get credit for foundations if you take this class. It's a five-week class. Each week is focused on something different, like relationships and money and health and looking at your ideas and your beliefs that are affecting what it is that's going on in your life and changing that. So different tools. Actually, for those of you who don't like homework, there is no textbook for this class, so there's not a lot of reading. It's life application kind of stuff. So there's a sign-up sheet in the back. We would love to have you take that if you'd like to. Just to let you know, as you see the foyer is closed today. It was closed last week too. They're doing that remodel, so sometimes we will be coming in. You can come in the door back here, or you can go around and come in the patio doors. There is no water, I think, in the building today, so there are porta-potties right outside that door. Actually, you can go out that door too, right outside there. We invite you to follow us on Facebook and to share the talks as they get posted on Monday and to check in on Meetup and say that you're coming because that makes it feel like something that people that don't normally come might want to go to and there's not only four people attending. We also have a sign-up sheet back there if you'd like to join one of our teams to set up or to break down. And we have decided, because we have not had people signing up to bring coffee, and so it ends up being put on the same two people all the time, that we're going to not have coffee for a while and see how that goes. Maybe when the weather gets cold, you guys will want to do it and more people will sign up. And so really, my intention for even having coffee is so that we can have time to be together to just be connected to each other and talk with each other and have that kind of intimacy. And so what we're going to start doing next week then is as soon as service is over, we're going to break into whoever wants to do this, break into small groups, and we're going to have little discussions. It'll probably be three people because we're not going to have that much time. We're going to have 15 minutes, like something like, what is the golden nugget that you got out of the talk today? Just so we have an opportunity to be connected heart to heart with each other and to talk with each other. We'll do that for 15 minutes and then we'll ask for everybody's help. We'll have 30 minutes to break down and get out of here. So we're going to start doing that next week. Um, That's it, I think, for my invitations.